Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the March 15th, 2022 meeting of the Hatfield Select Board. Um, as usual, um, let me begin by reading our public participation policy. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings and all other public meetings of the town of Hatfield. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. Uh, as always, our first order of business is public forum. Is anyone here for public forum? I can see. And no one's joining us. Everybody's busy. It's light out. <laughs> Everybody's busy. Um, for announcements tonight, we actually have a little bit of a show and tell announcement tonight, which is kind of exciting. So we, we have finally received the Hatfield 350th commemorative quilt. Um, Ed, maybe you'll help me with this. I um, just want to make sure it's right side up. This was made, handmade by Jeanette, and we can't remember Jeanette's last name, right? Um, so it's really beautiful. Um, oh, it, it is indeed. It will hang in the um, <coughs> town hall somewhere. I'm not sure where this is going to go. Um, but I just wanted to go through. I Hang on, I took a picture of it so I could read it from my phone. Okay, so the blocks all symbolize um, particular things. So corn, which was a major crop in the early... This is like Vanna, but he's going to be like Vanna. Um, in the early 19th century, which of course continues to today. Um, the second block is the 350th logo. This represents tobacco leaves. Um, the fourth block represents the wheel at the old mill, which is really nice. Um, of course, the town seal. Uh, and then we have this one represents beef. And I did not know that, that Hatfield Beef has a, not the, not the store, but beef from Hatfield had a really great reputation. Um, so much so that General Washington purchased beef from Hatfield for his troops. Didn't know that one. Um, let's see. The seventh one is the sawmill block. Um, which is another nod to the succession of industry at the Mill River Waterfall. Um, the white one in the middle down at the bottom is the, the legend that explains all of this. And then this um, represents the um, vegetables and crops that Hatfield's still famous for. So I think That's it's really great. beautiful and we're Careful. really happy and proud to have this. And we just wanted to make sure we could share it with townspeople. They'll get to enjoy it when they're here in the building, but we thought it was worth recognizing tonight. And we didn't unplug ourselves from the microphone, no, so that's beautiful. kind of a miracle. <clears throat> so we, we thank Jeanette very much yes, for that. Indeed. Okay. That's all I had. Did you have anything? I, I had nothing, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, spring, ahead. Ahead. Oh. spring ahead. That's right. Okay. All right. So we'll move right along to approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 4th, 2022, and the minutes of March 8th, 2022. Second. <clears throat> Excuse me. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No, ma'am. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so we're going to go out of a little out of order on our posted business. We're joined by Brenna Duquette from the Hatfield Housing Authority, who's here to give us an update on, on the recent improvements at Capwalk. There's been a lot of activity over there, so we're, we're glad you're sharing um, some information about that with townspeople. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was important to come and just share what has been completed, what's ongoing, and what we're um, discussing in the foreseeable future. We've had a lot of talk about the parking lot, but that is not the only thing that we're doing over at the Housing Authority, also known as Capawong. 
I gave you all a very long-winded version of it, um, but I'm going to shorten it up. So a couple of the improvements are going to be through the Mass Safe program, specifically oh. Lean. Um, and they have committed to installing mini splits or the air source heat pumps in all 44 units. Wow. So that's really exciting at no cost to the housing authority. Wow. And um, so that's one of the biggest, most exciting things in the works right now. And um, aside from, you know, obviously being a uh, far better heat source than our electric baseboard heat right now, it's eliminating tenants having to provide their own AC units and installing and removing, storing, that whole thing. So very exciting. Also through that, we got um, just under $77,000 worth of uh, upgrades to our weatherization so things like sealing of the windows um, door sweeps door kits just little things to help improve um, the weatherization of the the buildings um, so that was great once we did that we were able to apply for a grant through the Department of Housing and Community Development DHCD has a sustainability funding you can apply for every two years for up to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and so we have been afforded um, the money to install bath fans which is it seems minor but it's a really big deal to not have a fan in your bathroom as far as moisture and things like that so when the buildings were built no one thought of that so this is something that we're really excited about um, and Aside from bigger projects, some of the smaller things we've been doing, um, the community room has been getting some upgrades. So we had really old carpeting. We redid the flooring. We're going to be purchasing all new furniture. Oh, nice. Um, and on the note of the community building, we're actually in the process probably by the spring of 2022 installing an emergency generator that will power the community building so this was projected for 2023 we bumped it up because it was last year 2020 Hatfield got hit with a couple storms and we lost power and at one point it was almost 24 hours without power for Capilong residents so that was like all right let's move this generator up mm. it's now you know top of our list so in the event of a power loss, obviously not a major one that's going to last a few days, but even a few hours, um, residents will still have kitchen, bathroom, laundry facilities, TV, uh, internet, and then just heat and AC if needed as well. So that's a really exciting thing in our future too. So that's coming. And it's important to note that we are not doing all these projects one after another after another. I don't want to put the residents out, um, hey, you couldn't use your parking lot for three months and now you can't use your bathroom for a week, that kind of thing. So we're not going back to back to back with stuff, but we are really striving to keep in line with, I think with Massachusetts and, and the United States as a whole, as far as sustainability and really those energy improvements and then just the health and safety and well-being of residents, even small things, um, security cameras on our community buildings so we can see the parking lot and the entrances to doors, just little things like that. So I'm hoping residents appreciate it and aren't too overwhelmed by everything it is you know something that was built in the 70s so these changes are necessary but i also don't want to inundate all at once so that's why that's kind of staggered up until 2023 um and i think the last and most important thing that i wanted to touch on has no monetary value associated with it it's our tenant organization so we're not DHCD recognizes what's called local tenant organizations, so we're not official yet, but I do see that happening. But as of right now, tenants organize themselves. Our tenant board member, Judy Shell, attends the meetings and then reports back to the board, which is helpful if going in front of the board is daunting to a resident and they don't want to voice a complaint or concern to the whole board. Now they have an avenue and you know she's a tenant board member she lives there she understands so they have a different route to be able to be heard um, comfortably so that to me is one of the more exciting things as well um, i think there used to be a fairly active tenant association some kind of organization years ago. I, I, yeah if i if 
if I remember correctly. So, right. I mean, that's that's a, that's good. Then kickstarting it again. Good. Really good. Yeah. And then the weatherization. I mean, with the cost of you know yeah. heating and all of that, Absolutely. because that's an expense that the housing authority picks up. So Absolutely. that's really good that you. Guys Definitely everything's going to be helping our bottom line, but also the goal is to obviously make the quality of life for tenants a little say, easier comfort, as well. Yeah. So, and we, we want to make sure, um, you know, I just want to end with, we want to be integrated with the town. We don't want it to be, oh, this is the state-run housing authority. We still want to keep that cute, quaint, Hatfield mm -hmm. way of life as well. So um, Now, do you, I know that it works differently. <clears throat> I know there used to be a waiting list there, but now it's not by specific housing right you have to be on the state list and then you go anywhere so like you can't a, a resident can't ask to be on the capawank waiting list oh, they absolutely can the um but so you go on the whole state list so and identify a, that right correct so absolutely it's a statewide waiting list called champ and right. you're able to fill out one application and apply to multiple different housing authorities i've seen people apply up to 200 in the state or you could wow. just apply to hatfield and they do differentiate by local preference, veterans preference, and right. emergencies. So really the only people coming over Hatfield residents who want to live in Capawonk are vets and people who are homeless or other type of emergency situation, domestic violence, things of that nature. So it still is smart enough to say, you've lived in town your whole life, you want to live in Capawonk, you're going to come before somebody from Northampton who just likes Capawonk, so. I gotcha. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I mean. Well, that's that, good to have that explanation because I didn't, that's not how I thought it was working. I thought right. it was. But, oh, you just get thrown on a yeah, list and <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only problem is, is it makes our wait list very long compared to what it was when it was just people filling out an application, dropping right. it off at the office. I do find a lot of um, emergencies specifically are from Eastern Mass and they've never been to Hatfield. They have no intention in um, living in Hatfield. So even though my wait list is, we'll say 500, only about 50 of those people actually want to live in Hatfield and the right. rest are just putting their name and hoping something sticks kind of thing. Right. So, right. Okay. And so then ultimately probably decline it. Correct. If it comes up. Correct. So it's just more work for me, but I don't think that it by any means um, makes the odds for a Hatfield resident of getting housed any slower. About how long does it take? I mean, I know it's variable, but I'm just... <laughs> So since I've taken over in 2019, I've seen a huge turnover at the housing authority. So I don't think what I've seen is reflective of like the pattern over the last 10 years. Um, but I've been telling people two years or less just because I've wow. been getting vacancies that quickly. I think it's, I'm just at that point where we have that turnover at the housing authority. Mm -hmm. um, wow, okay. Yeah. Excellent, excellent information. You're always moving yeah. forward and improving things, and we really appreciate that and looking out for the tenants over there. Of course. Did you have anything? I just want to thank you and the board for all these grants and stuff. So <laughs> many splits are big for the residents over there. Yeah, I absolutely. think it's outstanding. So thank, thank you. you for everything you do for Kappa Wonk. I yes. did want to feel the town out on that as well because I don't know what our feelings are as far as eyesore of the building, but I will work with you guys and make sure it's not something that we can't all live with for the next however long years. What do you mean the? Well, when you install them, I mean, they're gonna be pipes and things right. running and yeah, probably right. a lot of construction and yeah, right. so. Yeah. That's what bushes be. and shrubs are for. <laughs> <laughs> Just add some more trees, right. dreaded trees. Right. And, uh, yeah. Everything sounds <laughs> great, Brenna. Yeah the right kind of yeah, everything sounds great thank yeah. you for all you've done can i can i ask one question course, though yeah how did how did winter go with the new setup with the um with the parking lot uh, yeah. and people up moving cars and i mean was there any same as always or was there new, I, new concerns with the I new didn't, layout um no new concerns except for from vincent my maintenance guy yeah. he's the only one that's griping over the the changes but um, we actually got a new snow removal company and they use a little bobcat instead of trying to use a truck. Yep. So with those additional 
spots, it was no problem. Right. So it actually worked out really well. Good. And I hope it worked out for the town not mm -hmm. having so many cars over here now. Yeah. I think no, we only have two. So, here yeah. yeah, that's great. Good. Yeah. And, and I'm assuming that everything worked out well if there needed to be emergency vehicles. Because we had, you know, back when Steve was the chief, he was involved. I think Bob's on the call. I don't know if it's Bob or Carrie, but I'm assuming all of that worked out okay. Because there was, you know, questions about the turning radius. Right, and right. And but um, you don't know of any I haven't heard otherwise, and to me, no news oh, is good news. Bob. Hi, Bob. Good evening. Did you hear my question? I caught part of it. I know it was about the, the parking lot and the yeah, turning and everything. Yeah, just wondering, you know, there was... Yeah, there was a lot of discussion about the ease of um, emergency vehicles getting in and out. I just was wondering, since the project's done, what the experience has been so far. Uh, so we haven't had any major issues getting in or out. It, it is actually a little bit wider in certain areas than it was before. Mm -hmm. um, so the actual access to get off of School Street is a wider. Mm -hmm. um, totally no matter about. what, it's going to be a little bit tight making the turn just because our trucks are large. Right. But we have hose. We can always add more. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Just Thanks wanted for the to update. get some feedback on that. Good. Good. Great. Yep. I know you have another meeting to go to, so I we're, apologize, we'll release you. But thank um, you. No. We appreciate. You. We, I, I really appreciate that you come in. You know, regularly and update us. It's Absolutely, really and we're excited about everything, so we're excited to busy. share it. Yes. Try. It's sure. really a nice asset for us to have here. So. Yeah. yeah absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, guys. Brenna. Excellent. Thanks, Brenna. So our next item would be our COVID update, but Bob Osley has not shown up yet. So maybe we'll just move forward and if he comes on, we'll backtrack. So that means it would be your turn, Julie. Yes, would. Come on up to the microphone. Danielle, do you wanna join her? Right. So Julie Pokola. Um, and, uh, of course, Danielle Staniszewski from Recreation Commission. So you're here to talk about pickleball courts. I am, yes. Uh, I am a new resident in Hatfield. I moved here two years ago, just a month before COVID. So, But uh, I love Hatfield. It's a great town, and I love pickleball, and I'd like to bring the two of them together and really create a, a community around pickleball here in town. Um, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the world. Uh, the Pickleball Association estimated it grew by 40% last year, 4.8 million people in the United States playing, and their their courts springing up all around the region. From the smallest is uh, in in West Hampton in the town hall. They've got a court, and uh, I know exactly where too. I can picture it. <laughs> yeah, it's like this basketball. <laughs> that basket for the old basketball court. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, down to Westfield's got six dedicated courts that are lit. People are playing day and night. And uh, I've talked to a lot of people, well, I don't know a lot of people yet, but I've talked to many people in town, and they're excited about the idea of having pickleball here, uh, both because the, um, th they're interested in the sport. It's a sport that's growing fast because it's really easy to learn. Like within 15 minutes, you can be playing a game and having fun. And it's then- Kind of a tennis, oh, kind yeah. of a, right? Yeah, it's like, it's so much fun. <laughs> so this is the, the paddle. Okay. And uh, the ball looks like this, almost like a oh, wiffle ball. Like ball. Okay. Yeah. Like the court ball. is about a quarter of the size of a, a tennis court. Okay. And, um, and, and it's, it's easy to learn, like people of all ages are, are playing it, uh, but you can always get better. And there, there's actually professionals that play pickleball. They're trying to get it into the Olympics for 2028 um, because it is growing so fast and people enjoy it so much. I've, I've, I know people who, who do this and they just absolutely love it. It's a great way to get out and have some activity and yeah. socialize a little bit. So you're looking to have? Uh, two courts on the basketball courts on, uh, on School Street. And uh, I measured them off and there's ample room for two courts. And uh, people that I've talked to in town feel like it could really maximize the use of that space. Um, that, that People, that it isn't used a lot for basketball. And so it'd be nice to be, yeah, there's disagreement about that. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to have space that could be used by a wider range of people, wider range of, of ages. Um, 
the Recreation Committee uh, has, supports the idea of doing it. I did hear an objection from, from one person who sounds like it might be similar to what you're saying. Is, um, so Mickey Sanderson. Uh, Who's like, joining us? Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. hi, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, so she likes the idea of pickleball in town, but is concerned about uh, having it in the basketball courts because. And interfering with the. Yeah. Um, Can I chime so, in really quickly? Yeah. Um, so Julie came a couple months ago, to, or maybe a month ago, to our meeting, and we really like the idea, but we think it's more of like a temporary spot. Um, we would like to try and go for a CPA loan next year and possibly get like a permanent spot um, to actually have maybe a tennis court and a pickleball court. So yeah, you I, can, you can. that's what's on our radar. So if we could do the basketball court, it would be temporary until we could build something official. And you can put two pickleball courts on, on one tennis court. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So you really need um, pavement, though. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I believe that the high school plays pickleball as part of their phys ed and uh, yes. gym course. So I'm wondering if a section of the parking lot at Smith Academy could be used. I checked out all the parking lots, and they're they're just too cracked. No, no, I mean oh, paved. Okay. I mean set up and paved, and that would be the location. And okay. that way, the school could use them as well. Maybe that's that, that would be the ultimate of, location. That right, be, right. You know, but I, I, I understand the cracks. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and by the way, we used to have a tennis court in half. I know. Uh, Two. We had, and I, they were. Behind All the, the uh, time the people were playing school. down there. I used to go down there and play, yeah, and there'd always be a line. I mean, Father right. Coonan was there every night So playing. Um, that right. is definitely on our radar. I think it would be great to have um, space. That, I've talked to Judy Strong about it, too, on a couple spaces we threw out. Our, I don't know about behind the center school, like behind where the softball is. A better spot, I think, would be back by HES maybe behind the community gardens. I don't want to mess with the rental of that farmland or anything, but just and, a couple and, of spots we've talked about. But you're right, the parking lot's right now. They've yeah. been on Capitol for years. Well, I mean, and and they're, but the maybe, court, that's not, if yeah. it's a matter of fixing up a, a section, yeah. all the parking lots need to be redone. We, I think oh. everyone in town knows <laughs> that. But I'm wondering if, if even short term, which could ultimately be long term, that would be, there's plenty of parking, obviously. It could be used by the school. It could be used by people. You could probably set up more than two courts in, I'm just thinking of that corner. So, look, can know. I just, yeah. so I, I think that these basketball courts are used a lot. And maybe it's going to be a little slow going. You know, there was some, we, we had to shut them down for COVID. There may have, been, maybe people got a little out of the habit of using them. Although I'm sure last summer and fall, they were able to do that. But in my, you know, my travels, I always saw a lot of people using those courts. Um, but again, probably mostly in the evening, you know, you'd see the pickup basketball games. Mm, so it's a timing I, I, thing, so it right? could be a timing thing. From but a I, but my, my, I would just want to add on though that if you put them on the property of either of the schools, you know, people aren't supposed to be on school grounds during school hours. So that means someone like Julie who might want to play on a Monday morning with some friends, it's really not supposed to be there. Right. So I'm not sure that locating at either of the school locations is really okay. where to go. Okay. And my concern with behind HES is now we're gonna have, those are gonna be condos. You're not gonna be able to park back I'm there. Like we're so used yeah. to driving back and parking for the baseball diamonds or whatever. So I'm not sure that it's property, nice not to mention that's, you know, right basically in someone's backyard now. Yeah. Um, about the basketball courts, um, it, it could be possible to set up times that pickleball can only play like uh, during when school's on up until two o'clock in the summer, maybe just in the morning, so that yeah. it's, it's oh, really dedicated. I think there's dedicated. a way to make it work and share yeah. it, particularly if you're thinking it's sort of a temporary spot. I yeah. mean, I'm all for it. I'm all for getting them put somewhere. That's the obvious place that we could make this happen right away. Right. So people could could start doing this, and then we need to, and, and you know, we, and we can do it for free because uh, friends of mine have laid down lines all over the place, and they're willing to come and and oh, do it for nice. free. Yeah, and so they could just be laid right over the basketball. Yeah, yep. It's easy. There's like in a uh, no net, so I don't. There's a net, but yeah. it, it's a portable net. Oh, it's a portable net. Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, so how would we have a portable net? Like, how does that work? Because you can't just leave it there. Right? Yeah. So, like, it, there's different models. So, in uh, in Haydenville, people just bring their own nets. Like, I own a net. Okay. Um, but in other places, like at, at Hampshire College, we have a there's a storage box, and we have the nets in there, and then we have a combination lock. Okay. And um, I'm actually I I talked to the principal at Smith Academy today, and uh, Dina Pulver. Pulverary right. is laying down lines for three courts in there. And so what I'm talking about is starting to have people play there and pay, uh, like in the evenings, pay $5 and we can pull that money together to buy nets so it wouldn't cost anything for the town to have equipment. So you have a location up there for them? Pardon me? She just started talking to him today, oh, okay. Dr. Driscoll, about getting in there, but I don't know the likelihood of, are you going to be able to do that in the summertime? And no, like this is just like, to, I want to start, I want to start like right now. building a committee, mm -hmm. building a community in the evening. Um, so while and then, in session. Right. Yeah, so exactly. I guess I, I, I think we could just completely overthink this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think in its simplest, it's a, it's a request to put some in for now and people just have to figure out how to share that resource. And I think that can be done fairly easily. Um, you know, maybe put a sign up that says, you know, please be courteous and, you know, share share the space so that everybody has, you know, e fair access to it. That's what, I, think that's it what I think it would only work if the kid, it's used when the kids are in school. Because when the kids get out of school, one of the first places they go to are well, the Well, that's true course. in the afternoon. But, and, but yeah, in the summer, yeah. I'm not sure who's down there playing and what's going on. Um, you know, so I think I, I'm all for putting them in there with the idea that it's kind of a temporary spot. Because, I mean, tennis courts are a much bigger deal. Yep. They have to be fenced in. Yep. And, you know, so you're talking about a, a much... it should be. Like, even this should be fenced in. I right. played on a million. Because otherwise you're probably chasing the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. I, I play all over the place, and, and most places aren't fenced in. They so, are. No. Yeah. And I've chased balls all over the place. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, Julie, could I ask another question? Just given this room, I, I'm certainly familiar with and heard about pickleball. Never oh. seen a court though. So, if this room, and I'm not saying to set it up here, I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize the size of what a court would be. It's 20 by 44. Okay. So, the back side. It's two thirds, probably this width and 20 across here in this yeah. room. Morning. And then yeah. that's the court itself, and right. then there's usually like yeah, it's so got to be able to run outside of that exactly. So, yeah, like, like tennis, thirty-four right? by yeah. thirty-four by sixty-four. Okay. So you'd be able to fit one on two. this two on that space easily. Okay. I yeah, think that's about be, like a hundred by a hundred. Yeah, I I think it would be, and you've probably already done it, but maybe we can put cone. I I would just like to see the dimensions, but I, I'm a supporter of pickleball. Sure. Just, just so you know. But I think it would be nice to see the, the space out there, like if, if the cones were set up, you know, sure. hypothetically, or, or what realistically of what a court size would be. Sure. Or, whether, or some sort of, you know, uh, paint that washes off in the rain, to have an idea of where the four corners would be for each of the courts. Type sure. Thing or something. Would we? Would you want to set up a time to, to do that? Yeah, or or whenever it's convenient for you, and then just I'm you retired. can let me know and just say, <laughs> well, you can just say, Brian, it, it's it's yeah. it's done. Go okay. swing by. You sure. Know, as long as we use some sort of uh, chalk or something that I've got. Wash yeah, off, I've, I've laid out chalk on that wash out in the rain because we don't. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't mean the whole court. I just sort yeah, of mean the edges. The, the, the edges. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Okay. Um, I just then, need your contact information. Yeah, it's Brian Mo. Uh -huh. you know, my email, Brian Mo at Verizon.net. Or you can and, always M use M U Brian M O R or Brian it's M O. M O for the Brian. email. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. B R I A N M O. Okay. Yep. All right. I'll, yeah, and I'll that way that we can just, you know, <laughs> can have an idea, I, you know. Yeah. And I also think I'm going to have a conversation with the DPW director. Um, okay. I, I mean, maybe there's a place we just haven't thought of that that's fairly decent that just needs a little bit of work. Yeah. People court, have suggested the, places, and I've driven all around. Yeah, and it's like car, uh, I know. It's just people think a surface is good, and yeah. then it's like slanted or well, cracked. Well, no, that's or, what know. happened because we had those courts, and they were beautiful, and they were there for years. Yeah. We. You know, when I was in high school, even in college, I used to go 
and play tennis there sometimes. And then there was, I guess there was no money for maintenance. Right. And eventually uh, and they, they all started heaving. And, and, they, and yeah. then, you know, once a tennis court has a crack, no one's going to play on yeah, it because it's, it's dangerous. Between the cracks yeah, it was really, yeah. the fence yeah. got all nasty. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they just got completely let go. And it's too bad because they were pretty nice courts. Yeah. And we used to have a lot of fun down there. We play on the courts at Hampshire College. And the, my friends are just so dedicated that they're filling in the cracks keeping the grass growing. Sure. So I'm sure that would happen here if, you know, X it years from now. It would be great to have a little somewhere where may, maybe there was two pickleball, two tennis courts. That would be so fun. Great. I think townspeople would use them like crazy. Uh, mm. We just have to find the spot. Yeah. And the money. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> so what would be the process? I know Brian wants to look at what it would be like. What would be the process in terms of getting approval? Well, I think it, I think if we have support and can figure out, I'm speaking for myself. I think, and I, I think you have the support of the board, but we just need the logist to figure out the logistics, right? Of of who can use the court as as which sport when. Yep. I, I think that's probably anybody's biggest concern, whether they're uh, sitting in this room or if they're watching on TV, is just sure. uh, because it, you know we. We always have this conversation here, and it's the same about fields when it comes to baseball and softball. It's like we're a farming community; we should have a ton of fields, but you know, there's still only a limited number of spaces that you can do certain activities, yeah. and this is one of them that needs, you know, you need concrete or asphalt or something to play pickleball. I mean, so, I guess my yeah. feeling is, if you if we have them there, it's just going to be a matter of just common courtesy. Of, yeah, that's exactly you know, cut, what it is. If you're in a you know, basketball game, maybe yeah. cut it a little short if people come for pickleball right. and same, you know, in the reverse. Absolutely. And that's how it worked down at the tennis courts. Yeah. Right. You know, you could play all night if no one showed up. If people right. showed up, you did the right thing and yep. finished up your game and gave other people a shot. Yeah. So. That, that's how it works in Haydenville. It's a combination of basketball, tennis, and pickleball. And you, you go over there, it's being used, you say, well, how much longer are you going to be playing? So it, it, yeah. it doesn't end up being... People well, get it's it. It's nice because if it's, you know, you, Hatfield's small enough, too. If you drive down and they've just started a basketball game and they're saying, hey, we just got started, yeah. we're going to be here a while, you just go home and come back later. Or it's like putting your quarter day. on the pool table. Right? But you would be, yeah, exactly. It would be, um, you know, best probably used during the day yeah. for pickleball. Yeah. Because it seems like those summer nights mm -hmm. were pretty busy over there. Yes, basketball. Yeah. With basketball. Yeah, like yeah. nobody Quite frankly, or, nobody or like 50 of them. I'd really like to kids, see that, you know, you know yeah. back. Because yeah. yeah. it was yeah. really good for the oh, kids and they had a lot of fun. And it was all age groups, all playing. Yeah. It was really, really nice. So, Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought it up to us. And I'm, I'm you know, Danielle, thanks to the Recreation Commission for yeah. being How supportive of this. And just looking for some new you know, recreational opportunities for people in town. It's a perfect CPA project. Yes. Yep. How long does it take to set up the court? I mean, are you, are you looking for permission tonight or just wanted to lay the groundwork and see I'd how we... I'd love permission to put down the lines. Yeah. Well, can we... How about if over the course of the next week, Brian wants to see how it sure. looks proportionately and we're meeting again next week, so we could decide, because it's coming up on nice weather. We don't want you to miss too much nice weather. Right. Well, I'd have been out there today, that's for sure. <laughs> so if we could get that taken care mm -hmm. of in the next week and then make a decision next week about that good? just putting the temporary ones there. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. It's nice to uh, see what town, like the, what these meetings are like. and. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I love this town. What, you mean you don't watch it on TV every week? <laughs> Julie, I'm kind of uh, disappointed. I'll start, I promise. Okay. <laughs> Julie, you said you're new. You've only lived here two years. Yeah. So I'm new, and we've lived here 23 years. So <laughs> I'm still new. These, these guys aren't new, but um, I am. Yeah, so, I'll yeah. be dead before I'm not new. <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice meeting, nice meeting you as well. Thanks so much for bringing this forward. Julie, I appreciate it. So it looks like Mr. Osley still is not here. Um, so we might as well was, move on to... Was he definitely... I mean, did he know he was supposed to be in? Because there's no, nothing new to report, right? Well, I had... I mean, I didn't... The I Board just of don't Health know he... met last week, right? And, yeah, Karen and oh, I had okay. talked um, last week, and, and they met. there. Because he's know, usually pretty punctual. There was a slight increase. Um, it went to four. Yeah. Yeah. 
but there, there is. There's some... no mask mandates. It ended in the schools. Everything's done. So. Right. And we'll right. get a new, we'll get a new call tomorrow, right. being so a we Wednesday. We really need him to right. come on, to be honest. If we're going to all get well, the no, calls on Well, no, but there was some discussion last week at the Board of Health meeting regarding um, the robo calls, and oh. and I had thought that perhaps. That should be a discussion. Oh, so we can we can we can do board. that. So I talked with Chief Flaherty mm -hmm. uh, in our COVID committee, which, mm -hmm. which has one of the members of the Board of Health, myself, mm -hmm. Chief Flaherty, Marlene. Because the chief had recommended. Right, that. and and depending on what happened this Wednesday tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, the feeling was with no more mask mandates, and if the numbers continue to stay low. Um, at least Bob and I didn't, and we haven't spoken to anybody else about it, but didn't feel that there there was an advantage to call to I having agree, a robocall anymore. I agree anymore, with right? that. We suspended I mean, them before and right. brought them back when when we needed you know, to. Right. And right. and now, to be honest, pe so many people are doing at home tests that mm -hmm. there's no you know the numbers that have been reported aren't necessarily accurate necessarily, because they're only yeah. whoever goes and gets the PCR test. So, so. I'm, f I'm fine with discontinuing that. All right, so we will do it, um, Chief, right? That's what we talked about. So we'll do the call tomorrow, and maybe we can make an announcement that this will be the last call for the time being right. type thing, or unless something, you know, unless we need to reach out. Or, yeah, I know, mean, due to the, the, the trend the low, the low numbers, numbers of, yeah. and, um, you know, if, if, if it's ever necessary, we'll, you know, reinstitute it. You go with that, Anything. Bob? Okay. That sounds great to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for doing that again. Yep. We appreciate it. Yep. Okay. So let's get into um, appointments and resignations. So we have received a resignation from Ernest Fitzell from the police department that we need to accept. Make a motion to accept the uh, resignation from Ernest Fitzell with regret. And I'll second that and wish wish he and his family luck because uh, it appears that at the time constraint was he and his wife just gave birth to their fifth child. So wow, wow, good, oh my good luck. <laughs> Wowee. So um, a motion's made and second. Any further discussion? No, thank you. I would you. just like to thank him as well yep. for his service to town and wish him luck. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have the nomination of Scott Pomeroy as the inspector of animals. For animal control officer the previous week. Yeah, this Two is animal positions. inspection, right? Oh, yes, it is. This is for the um, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. Yep, same agency. So he's it's been doing this for years. He's very good at it. We are so grateful we are that indeed. we have him to be able to um, do so this. I'll make a motion to uh, appoint Scott Pomeroy as inspector of animals. For the Department of Agricultural Resources. Well, it's Second. no, it's, it's I don't for know. Hatfield, but well, it's, I'm just reading them. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 And thank you, Scott. Did you second it? I did second it. Oh, okay. It. <laughs> um, a motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. A man he of many. Is, yeah, he's animal-related hats. Okay. And then, Marlene, your, it's time for your report. My goodness, we are moving along here. I know. Um, okay, so we have received, I, I briefly brought, brought this up at, I think, two meetings mm -hmm. ago, um, but it wasn't this request, this specific request was not on the agenda. Um, so I, I would ask if, if the select board would support the use of Smith Academy Park um, for the Bad News Jazz and Blues Orchestra, and Lovely this would be man. on Sunday, September 11th from 5 to 7, and a rain date of September 18th. Sounds great. Yep, sure does. Love the name of the band. I'd love to see a lot more events over there in that space. Yep. I want to see the pavilion built. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of Smith Academy Park, we had had well, a. Do we, we need to, to, we have to vote, vote on this, this or did right? we already? We didn't vote on this. Oh, yet. no, you haven't voted. We, we did need you? to. You vote, said you so did. I'll take a motion. Could, so I'll make a motion to approve the um, concert to be held on September 11th and with a rain date of September 18th at Smith Academy Park from 5 to 7. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
And so on sort of related to that topic, we um, at a previous meeting we had a conversation about having a, a form, a type of form mm -hmm. for users to to um, complete for, for use of the park. Um, you have before you a, a draft, which I have um, asked town council to review. So you have his edited version, and then you have uh, actually another version that has been updated. Um, Brian had noted that the form did not reference a site location. So I thought he's, that is rather well, important. Just, <laughs> you know. So, um, so I, 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 I got thinking that perhaps there are other uses for property, you know, our streets for, for uh, bike events, uh, you know, road right, races. road races. And so at the top, you'll, you'll see that it does reference um, parades, carnivals, festivals. And it's certainly your discretion if you, you'd like this type of form for any event or if you just like it specific to Smith Academy Park, we could do that. I, I mean, I, I like this form, but still the question becomes at the park, who oversees all these functions and stuff? Yes. We still haven't determined who's going to sort of manage or oversee yeah. and there's uh, the been events. some discussion so discussion I don't know if that's going to whether we got to create a committee to do this or appoint another board or something yeah. to to figure that out I think we got to seriously sp find some time sure. to discuss this mm -hmm. and and come up with some mm -hmm. ideas a brainstorming s session in order to determine who's going to yeah it know, could be a single person it could be uh, one person from the select board, it could be a board. Could be a know. board, could be whoever. Yeah. Right, exactly. I, I, so, oh, go sorry, ahead. go ahead, Diana. I just was noticing where the special events, it doesn't list concerts in there, which is probably the most obvious use of <laughs> yes. that space. Oh, up, up in the first sentence. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of like site location missing, isn't it? Right. <laughs> probably. I mean, it should I maybe say that, but it does say special events. But I agree with Ed. Um, I, f I think that in the future, um, the park could become very uh, popular mm -hmm. and used by all sorts of different events, mm -hmm. which brings the next point up for having a person or a committee or somebody in charge of this, of what if in fact they're willing to rent mm -hmm. access to the bathrooms or they need extra power for something. I mean, it's one thing to have a, a a band with no electricity show up and do their thing, but if it's it's something else, if in fact they need access for whatever reason to different things, so you know it, it's a building use form or it's an event form. But then we might need a building use form like the schools have if mm -hmm. somebody rents out the kitchen or the gymnasium, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you asked the question about other events in town. I think we normally only know about events if they're at the pavilion and we've approved a liquor license. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we don't really know what's a, an event that could be using the streets of Hatfield for biking or walking or, well, I, I don't know that they the need permission. Races come before I don't us. think they need to tell us if yeah. there's, um, th that we have to approve. I mean, it, it all depends what it is, right? It, if if yeah. they need police. Some fire, road races organize, they start from the Lions Club right. Pavilion, so they're using it and they have contacted my office right. Or the police. And the other gentleman who was doing that. the other one like a year from now or something, he was way on top. Of, like, the bike, yeah. Yeah, he bike asked event. for permission. So, yeah. I, so, but I think we need consistency, whatever that is, whatever the yeah. consistency is going yeah. to be, we need to be. The next thing I'm concerned with is trash. I mean, right. who's right. going to clean it up we don't afterwards? Have receptacles is our out DPW there. going to get stuck cleaning it and going above? I mean, I mean, I think that's why. I, I, I mean, I think in the, the 350th picture. committee, there's been some discussion about how we could be of assistance, maybe some of us helping move that forward. So maybe right. I'll talk to some of them. Thank you. <laughs> Not me, <laughs> but maybe some of, you know, let me, let Ed, me make Ed and some I calls. That, I will, I will make some calls and see sort of what the, cause I did miss our last meeting. So I'm not sure what, um, I, I would just like to note that Tom Mullen, attorney Tom Mullen 
did mention that if there is an individual or, or board or whoever it is that oversees um, planning, organizing these events, that um, if someone is denied, that there is a process for the person to appeal to, and it would be the select board. It should okay. be the select board they would appeal to. I'm just curious about this one thing about if music is played, um, the sponsor will furnish evidence that permission has been received from the copyright holder. Is yes, that typical? Yes, that was something town council had recommended. Um, no. I mean, that doesn't... It's, every wedding band and DJ in the that's world That's what I was going to say. I mean, I'm, in a perfect world, it might be great to have that, that, but that's not... What's up? It was interesting that he raised that yeah. because it was something he never Yeah, heard. I saw I mean, that he, too, the, but I... That issue doesn't reflect on the person renting the property no. out or it would be the I think performer. He's, he, He's, just, he's looking out for the town, you know, whether there could be some liability because the individual performed. So I think, I think what the difference is, honestly, is if you have a concert, which the COA has all the time, mm. I've played a million of them myself, we've all been to a million of them, that's one thing, to hear music, right? Mm -hmm. And when bars and restaurants have music, they have to pay ASCAP something. You know, there's other things. I think what this is referring to, I think, is like when the school does a play, they have to pay the. Oh no, for, I understand that. They have to that. pay for the rights. So but I think he says, incorporated everything. Uh, I I know, but it's if, saying if music is played. I mean, that to me means if you play. have TJ and the Peepers out there playing. Yeah. No, you we're know, not. They have to prove they have copyright. That's not up to us to do that. I don't think it's up to us. If they play us. a song that if was they, Right, if they, like, they got permission of Elvis to play for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's Elvis's problem. Not, I know. Not Brian He's not going to mind. Elvis well, is not going to mind. I'm just thinking, <laughs> Council on Aging had an entertainer out here last fall. Yes. And, and he does, like, Frank Sinatra. Of course. Yeah, I, and I get what Tom's doing. That, you know, as, as the town council, he's making sure that we're covered. But I, I believe um, that that is something that we're not we don't need to get into. I mean, that's that's pretty much everything that's performed here. In yeah, unless you're doing, covers of unless you're doing your own music. I mean, the bonfire has performers that cover other right. songs. Like, I don't know how right. that works. Mm -hmm. It happens yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that... Can I just, Molly, they can't hear you. They want you to speak up online. online I've got my mic. Mic. Know, but that mic doesn't go into what the, the online thing is. Uh, I just heard Don's recording. If you can just speak up, then they, they can hear you. They have to exit and yeah, our mic goes in. No, it doesn't. Those mics only go to my recording. Yeah, but some, but they must be able to hear us, or or they'd be complaining. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the same setup. So you can just talk to them. No. So is it? My microphones do not feed the webcam. I I un. My mic is only feed YouTube. So Marlene just needs Everybody to speak louder to, to speak that up. to okay. that mic in the, the with the blue oh, button okay. on it. Oh, okay. I will do that. Less. Thank you. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't think I we think should approve so. this tonight. I think this no. warrants a little no, bit more and, discussion and in the park. No, and please don't think that I okay. wasn't yeah, expecting nope. you to. It's just sort of a draft to put out there and, yep, and to sort of move it forward. You know, and, and, and I understand this really is going to evolve. You right. know, it's just. Let me make a couple calls this week and talk to some people. Well, I, this is a work in progress. We still yeah, got to. Yeah, right. It is. It is. Sit down with some people. I do think that the first and easiest thing that we can do is put a calendar, a, year, a calendar like that, a year's worth of calendar, in an office here in town hall. So if I want to use it on September 15th, I can come in and look and say, there's already something booked. I can't use it September 15th. Mm -hmm. you know, we can worry about the detailed part yeah. of it. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Our Just. Community yeah. On the website. Website. Anything yep. that gets approved is automatically put there. Oh, so that's good. So not only people interested in maybe using the space, but people looking for something to do. Right. And mm -hmm. Jerry at the Council on Aging, mm -hmm. right. all of her things, I put some in, I just showed her how to do it. So, mm -hmm. But not every, so, and I think that's great. Yeah. But I could be driving by and say, hey, I forgot to come in. So we, we need to be able to come in, somebody needs to be able to come in and look at a giant board and and see that or or talk to somebody who can mm -hmm. say sorry september 15th already got something right, on it at right. six o'clock that's okay i want it at one so somebody's yeah. got to go in and put one o'clock i mean I, I just don't want double booking is what i'm trying to mm -hmm. avoid potentially yeah, yeah absolutely or okay. triple let's keep this sort of work on progress. the agenda okay <laughs>
Yeah. Because it's coming up on the season when people might be Tis the season. wanting to uh, use that space more mm -hmm. often. Okay, Marlene. All right. And the next item I have, and, and I would expect that either we can defer this and have a discussion with the Finance Committee, or um, I can just briefly talk about it um, now, um, whatever, whatever you like. We have received additional requests for um, use of the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And the select board did approve uh, funds for account for the for the accountant. Are we going to gonna take this up with the finance committee? So yes. So then let's skip would, over it now because I'd like to get to, to talk the, with them about it. Yeah. So let's because and the school I, also has a, a request. Yeah. So I'd like to go a little out of order and see if we could speak about the uh, memorandum of agreement with between the historical. the historical society because. You know, I don't want to run over mm -hmm. too much because we have um, people coming in at 6.30 and a lot to get done. So if you'd like to join us up at the microphone, that would be great. Hi, Amy. Hi. So we have this draft, this further draft. Well, we can't close the door, right? Um, just tell them we just need a minute. So the, the floor is yours. Excuse me? Did you want to speak to this or? No, um, no I just you know, felt like I should be here. Uh, right, right, right. You know, answer any questions. Um, I made the edits that you had requested. Um, right, there were a few things. A it's been a while. You know, and uh, define the... Uh, the committee, and I wanted to see if you know we can get this approved and, and get it going. This <laughs> has been dragging on just forever. One item that was was sort of lacking was a term, and so that has been right. added. And let's see, where there's a term, and uh, you wanted to know, um, wanted us to define. Yeah. The accessions commission. That's right. That's the other one. Um, so I define that as uh, three, three voting members. Uh, one from the commission. You can see it's on the on third the, page at the top. Yep, in the blue. Second to last so, page. So, so the the, okay, I do see that. Thank you. The in, in, regarding the term, if the uh, agreement would it be initially for one year. Yeah. Followed by recurring three-year terms, but that would have to be re we'd we'd revote that, correct? Mm. After one year, right? And then with the uh, with the hopes that at that point we'd start going to three years. Yeah, you know okay. the idea to see how it works, and you know. I mean, I would just say it's for a year, <laughs> okay. because that. I mean, we can't in this. I don't think make any. If we're saying it's a year, we can't make. Yeah, right. For beyond that year. But I, I, but it's the intention that I, it would it was, be a longer, I get the intention. a longer term right. after the first year. Right. Okay. I just want to, you know, um, it could be two, it could be three, it could be five. I think that's kind of what we're trying to say. Right. You know? Or it could be a year. I mean. Okay. Rather than have it spelled out, I think it's more. It's a one-year contract. Period. With the hope, basically, with the hope well, of it followed by a three-year or something. Uh, with with future terms to be negotiated. Yeah. Okay. Future. Okay. Yeah. Because I was going to say I don't want to say it's one it's year. It's just a verbiage. It's not yeah. like we're trying yeah. to not. No, I just. Uh, yeah. 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 I yeah. It's the wording, I think. Okay. Um, so future terms to be negotiated. Well, I I I think just so Amy and the Historical Commission and the Historical Society, it, we, we're just trying. We're saying all this because we're just trying to clean up what what the, con the contract or the agreement says. And its initial one-year term shall be yeah. effective from the date of the agreement, followed by a renewal of however we want I, to word I would just that leave it at that we'll because that means we have to discuss it this time next year. Yeah. Hopefully we'll, you know, have gotten somewhere with what we're going to do. Um, I, yeah. I would okay. just, if it's going to be a term of one year, it's a term of one year. Okay, that so period after. That means we have to after, revisit it. 
Okay. Well, so I, period I after agreement. Like I, I want to have something in there that says because there needs to be an ongoing agreement. I mean, I you know if we have this for one year and then what nothing. I mean, I just feel like I, I do want some idea that the point is in one year to discuss this and you know make any changes. But there there does need to be an agreement. Um, I think. Um, going forward and well, I just think I'm not sure why it's a problem to have wording that says you know to be revisited in in one year um, you know or negotiated in a year um, well that but that's different than what this says right so I mean putting it in for a term of one year means we have to talk about it in a year mm. so I think it should be I, I don't want to lock us into any kind of two year, three year, five year beyond that. It should just the way be... this is worded makes it sound like a four year agreement. Yes. The way it's worded. An initial one year term shall be effective from the date of the agreement followed by a recurring three year term. Yeah, there's, 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 no, there's, no there's no break, break to say after a discussion. So it should just for, be a one year term. Yeah. We will you know. It'll be the same this. three of us. Yeah. We we know that it's a multi year is the goal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. We just want to kind of see how the first year goes. I think there was what a lot I of think it does forth. is it keeps us revisiting this. Yeah, I mean, okay. I definitely want to revisit it, but right. like I said, I just feel like if. if um, well, we, we have to revisit it. We have the items. We have to know where they're going to be. We need to make sure they're kept safe and all of that. So okay. this will. Okay. You know. Um, so. Uh, Marlene, do you want to change that wording? Oh, yes, I'll, I'll make that change and then. Uh, you send me a copy and send a copy well, to we, um, the Historical is that the only Society. We can oh, just, we, can, we could vote it we tonight, can vote it with, tonight with, with the one just year saying with that the it'll, change. Yeah, and then it's right. done. And then when and then, they stop in to sign okay. documents, yeah. I'll make sure There's that no sense this of delaying is. It. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I would just say mem memorandum of agreement term. A one-year term shall be effected from the date of this agreement. agreement. Yeah. Not initial, just a mm -hmm. one-year term, and then we'll revisit right. it next year. Okay. Yep. We'll revisit it before this next year. We'll, okay. you know, we'll take it up so right, I'll right after the first of the year. To... Okay. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I'll make a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement between the town of Hatfield and the Hatfield Historical Society, Incorporated. With the change. Uh, with with the change made under section E, or excuse me, section F, for a one-year term. Okay. Second. <laughs> okay, a motion made and second. Any further discussion? Ed, no. did you have anything you wanted no. to add? Okay, uh, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Thanks, Amy. Okay. We got there. So we will, so Marlene, if I'll after see the... see how everybody reacts, because everybody else has to sign now, too. Well, <laughs> um, good luck. So that, Oh, that was not already agreed on by the other parties? Well, we just made changes to what's been agreed The change on. that was oh. just made, they, yeah. Uh, this not is, aware is, of that. I, I just, it's, well, it's I don't really minor. If we could, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, they, usually agreements have a term, yep. not a rolling mm. thing. So the last agreement was just rolling since 1972. Well, that's, yeah, well, my, but that's, that's why, of it. so Understood. what I, what I was just about to say was that Marlene, what I'd like to do is right after the holidays next year. So like January of next year, bring it up then let's mm -hmm. revisit it then. So that it gives us a little bit of time to think. And, and I, in all likelihood, we're going to discuss the, you know, the storage issues and everything in the meantime. Um, but then, you know, work on it enough in advance so that we can look at it a longer term okay. for the next agreement. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, Marlene, you'll send that to both me mm -hmm. and uh, to um, the Historical mm -hmm. Society. I will. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thank you very Amy. much. Thank you for all your work on this because yes. I know this yeah. has been a long process. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't Thank going you. to, but why I do you even. want to break? Come in. I'll just have to come in. Yeah, yeah. I, well, we should shut the. Yeah, I mean, you want to shut, shut the, the camera? The camera we'll off. We'll be back. <laughs> um, 
once again joined by our finance committee because it is budget season and we painstakingly go through all of our um, submitted budgets from our various departments. Um, so should we start with the capital improvement plan, the recommendations of capital planning? Yes. Okay. So Sean and I are going to do this tonight. Um, this committee um, is comprised of David Keir, Christy Boudreaux as the school committee representative, myself from the select board, and Sean from the finance committee. And we've had a good solid handful of meetings um, going through the various capital, um, requested capital items from different departments. And so we just want to put forward, um, you know, the projects that, that our committee uh, thought should move forward and maybe a little bit of information either about them or maybe potential funding sources. Um, so there's, there's a spreadsheet. Does everyone have this? Well, I think I'm going to use, no, I think I'm going to use the narrative sheet. Yeah. Okay. We have both. Um, and I'm just going to go, they're sort of laid out here department by department. Uh, and the town administrator's um, submissions, uh, vital record storage, um, which has been identified as a priority of moving them up to um, storage facility up at the water plant get them out of the flood zone area, has been identified as a priority, but we do not have a dollar no, figure on that. yet. And so, and, and I do not expect, or, or um, I'm not expecting that this be funded for FY23, but I, I do need to get a, um, a cost for okay, that. Okay, so that I'd is like not... It, at least getting it on the capital plan. Okay. And even if it's for the following year. That okay, so you are not looking for that funding. Okay. Not for 23. Okay. Uh, and then the um, design and modification for the um, bathroom upstairs to make it handicap accessible. Uh, where it looks like that's going to be about fifty thousand dollars. That's been identified as a mm -hmm. priority. Can Can you give me a thirty second? What's the plan for that upstairs? Not in thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we know. But we're going to do the bathroom, bathroom because I think it's going to be used. For public it's something, going it's going to be used public purpose, regardless of what it's going to be I mean, used for. I, I it guess needs to from the building inspector, Daryl. Right. right. That, no, no, no. no oh, oh, okay. I, I have no problem with that. I was I, just yeah. like, hmm. I mean, are we going to start being able to have meetings up there again like we used to because now we have an elevator? So, right. in I, theory, I, people could go up. I, I don't. I, I think the short answer is if the upstairs is used, the bathroom needs to be in working order, in working condition. Yeah. If it's used for any sort of meeting space, okay. office space, or anything, or, yeah, yeah, and and because I, it's I there, have no problem with the. If project. it wasn't there, yeah, we probably wouldn't have to add one. But you know, you've got to bring the what what you have up to code is what we're. Mm -hmm. That's our understanding. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. Um, and we we, and and just to be clear, well, this is from capital improvement. We haven't decided. We we have yet to decide how we're funding some of these things. Is that correct? Really right. Some some are identified as ARPA, and yeah, on here there's and some. you'll you'll you if yeah. you sort of cross check it with right. the spreadsheet, okay. you can see. Yep. Um, so so this, Sean, I'm reading this. The narrative isn't really complete. So the air purifiers for town offices is on here as a priority, um, but that's with ARPA funds. That's recommended to be. And that is. Thought we already did. Yeah. yeah. We did. Oh, so mm -hmm. maybe that's why he didn't put it on the. Um, okay, but it's yeah. still townspeople. Should, you know, these are yeah, things that are okay. okay. That is done. Yeah. Um. <sighs> one sec. Back to the bathroom. There is some money left in the project from downstairs renovation that could be repurposed. So Lori and I are working on that list of projects because I don't know the dollar figure at this point. But we will have one before our meeting with you guys because there is a pool of money that was <coughs> assigned to this building that didn't get used. Right. So, so it Good. could be offset. Yeah. Mm. There could be an Not offset. the whole thing, I don't think, but some of it. That would be great. Thank you. OK, so so again, the, the lists diverge here, Sean. Yep. Um, there is, now we're moving on to fire department. Um, the Bob has submitted a grant to get a ladder truck. Um, and he's probably on here if you have questions. 
It's yeah, a it very expensive, like one million dollar ladder truck. But if he gets the grant, the town's portion would only be sixty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. I yeah. asked the questions if it will fit in the current building without any problems retrofitting, kicking other equipment out. He said it would. Yeah. And I also asked the question about our personnel being able to operate it with just the customary amount of training that you'd get with any new engine. And he said yes. Um, but again, that's contingent on getting a grant. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously that's a really large purchase for $60,000 if the grant the comes five, through. It's a 5% match. It's a 5% match. So, 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 yeah. um, so 95% and, of it is. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with that. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure, um, Bob, when you might find out about that grant. They're supposed to start making announcements by May. Okay. Did I miss anything in my... Okay. Nope, that was perfect. That's great. Okay. Good job, Chief. So if we, so if we consider using ARPA for that, we could wait for the grant announcement. Right. Because we wouldn't need to appropriate it at town meeting. Right. So then we could just wait, right. find out if we get the grant. If we don't get the grant, we just don't. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't get the no grant, money. we don't yeah. spend the 60000 Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Which if we go free cash, we'd obviously have to appropriate it and then... Right. We wouldn't know whether we were going to spend it or not. Yep. Right. And then if we didn't spend it, it would be another year before we could right. get it again. Right. So Chief Flaherty is also recommending replacing Engine 2, which is a 1989 Ford pumper with a mini pumper. This is the truck that is housed in North Hatfield. Mm -hmm. um, the cost would be 325 and um, the new equipment would be more maneuverable. Um, and would allow access to areas of town where traditional pumpers have a difficult time getting to. Um, so that was um, put forward. Um, and, and it was listed here as maybe a priority depending on the grant funding to replace engine one, to replace, to get the ladder truck. Well, that's, if we get the ladder truck, are we trying to do, I guess that's my question for capital, Pl or for you guys, are we, if we get the, the the ladder truck, are we going to wait on this or? We asked Bob, Bob, your feeling was they were, dif I'll defer to Bob because he can explain the I mean, they're different and beasts. They are different, but it's a lot of big brand new apparatus in one year. So Bob, if you did you want to speak to that? <clears throat> sure. So the replacement of Engine 2 has actually been on Capitol for a while. It's gotten pushed back a couple of years. It should have actually already been replaced three years ago based off of our previous 10-year plan. Um, obviously, Engine 2 is 33 years old, and there's about a dozen or so homes that our current apparatus can't reach. And so the mini pumper would be able to get us to those properties. It would also be able to be used for some other calls, you know, power lines down and things like that, which will save us overall operating costs and maintenance costs because it's going to get better fuel mileage and it's cheaper to change tires or oil changes and all those things. So it, it will kind of save as a whole throughout the course of the year and it'll be able to handle more than just, you know, a, a couple of calls here and there. So it will be used more often as far as it compared to the latter. The ladder, if I were to get it through the grant, is replacing engine one, which is now coming up on almost 22 years old. So that was due to be replaced in a few years anyway. So they are kind of two separate projects. Okay. Um, the ladder is essentially out there because of the uh, grant application. And I asked the question, if we get the ladder truck, why can't we move engine one up to North Hatfield, but it wouldn't fit, is that right? Right. Uh, right now, it, there's a very few vehicles that could fit at North Station. It's a very small garage. It's only about 28 feet long. So the mini pumper and our brush truck are the only two vehicles that currently would fit at North Station at all. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other um, fire um, article for the, that was moved forward was replacing um, PPE and personal protective clothing um, which w it would be six sets of um, the, the turnout gear for um, members of the department. Those are done on a, a rotating basis so that people have, um, you know, current and safe. And that's $15,000. That's 15000 Yep. 
And then the utility Bob is coming on to the lease program. What? That would be the plan, yes, is to, to roll it onto one of the leases with some of the other vehicles that were uh, mentioned during you capital. Want to speak to the need for the utility vehicle. Uh, so it, it was actually listed for next year for the replacement. The current vehicle is a 2008 that was actually purchased through the fire association and then donated to the town. Um, it, the vehicle does smoke. Um, it has a leak in it that we found out about a year and a half after we purchased it. Uh, I've spoken to the mechanic. They're not really looking to spend any money because it could be seven, eight, nine thousand dollars to really affect the repair on a truck that's got 180,000 miles on it. Um, so it was just capital brought it up to possibly move it up a year just because we were looking at other loans. And this vehicle would be um, the one that I put in is actually cheaper than the original uh, price that was on the 10 year. I think I had originally in there for 65 and I lowered it down to 55. We're going to go with a little bit of a smaller vehicle um, that's this more beneficial, the, more fuel efficient, but still serve the needs of the department. This is the chief's vehicle. Nope, this would no. be the pickup truck. So the full timer uses it to do inspections and run around town. We send it for training um, to the fire academy and then we use it for weekly training as a kind of a personnel transport, carry some equipment, hoses. But we also use it after fires and things like that to pick up all the dirty hose, bring it back before we hang it and or wash it and hang it up. The hose doesn't go back on the engine? I was uh, if it's dirty and wet, no, you're not going to put it back on because then it's going to turn to mold and it'll degrade the hose. And then we're going to start replacing the hose quicker. So, I, I mean, but I, I do, do want to clarify something. You said capital planning brought it up a year. I, I thought you brought it. I mean, I don't remember that capital plan planning moved it forward a year. Yeah, I, I was, was uh, it, okay. it was on for next year. And then because of some of the other vehicle purchases, I know uh, David Keir is the one that kind of brought it up and said, you want to get a price? and to consolidate and move, put four vehicles on for a new lease. That's where this one kind of got moved forward a year or into FY23 purchase where I had it originally listed for FY24. Yeah, my understanding is this would not move up if we don't, if we decide not to do the lease. Right. The okay. only reason we're doing it that it's is the extra lease. You have right. two vehicles this year and two next year, and it doesn't make sense to do it over two years right. Right. or do two vehicles. So you'd want to do four. And so you have to move this and the COA van up. forward here okay. if you're going to do a lease. What? Why are we not doing? Why are we not doing the lease? No, no, no. If we are going to do the lease, it doesn't make a, sense. An additional Only lease. There's some talk lease. about an yeah. additional I, lease. I understand. Right. Okay. Right. That's the yeah. Not. Yeah. We only had two vehicles on in 2023, and we had two on in 2024, but. It doesn't really make sense to do the lease for two vehicles. So we move the two 2024s up to 2023. But if we decide for whatever reason that we're not going to do the lease, I'm not saying, I'm only saying it because the decision hasn't been made yet, that okay. we would, then we wouldn't necessarily do this this year. We might decide to, but we might decide to wait till 2024. Don't we, isn't this the last year of our, of the, of our lease or? One of them, yeah. One of them? So we have, we have one, couple. two, three, four outstanding to date. One is the last payment is in July of 22, but then the other ones have multiple years left, 25, 23, well, and 24. One of the leases is the ambulance. Right. Yeah. Right? And that has yep. multiple years. And that has multiple years. Yep. And then I don't know what the other... So that, the, I believe the ambulance is the 53630 yes. right? Yes, yep. Then there's one for $12,956 that has one more year. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. And then the current new one that you just approved last year is 129000 Still yeah, have equipment so, outstanding through 24. And then we have one that's coming off. And that's, yep, which is 31449 so he did get a quote to do the lease, to do the cruiser, the COA van, a pickup for Phil, and this utility vehicle is what we got quoted for a lease at this point. Right, and we'll get to those and other posts further down. There. down there. I yeah. didn't see this back then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, maybe next week we can get a printout on the leases and we can look yep. at it more in depth and decide yep. or at least try to come up with a plan. Can I ask a question? What happens with these vehicles that we're replacing? How do we retire them? Do we get funds back? Do we trade them in? How does that work? We well, usually there hang are on to stuff for to a really whatever. long time and then yeah. surplus them when they're... Yeah. Okay, so there's like, no like trade-in value coming back 
to us. I don't know, Bob, is there a trade-in on the fire truck? I didn't seek out what they would give us for a trade-in, but I know in other apparatus that, at least the fire department, we have trade in the ambulance. We had uh, a five or $10,000 trade-in. When we replaced engine three, we got 10 or 15,000 for a couple of vehicles. So we have gotten some trade-in value over the last few vehicles that we've purchased. I, mean, I can't speak to everybody else. Right, I mean, the other, the, if we don't get a, any trade-in, the other option is it goes to surplus. Right. And when we, it goes to surplus, you could get little or a lot, depending yeah, on Yeah, it goes to like a bid. We put a, it's bid. like basically a auction. auction. Okay. But typically the town hangs on to vehicles for a really long time. They're not usually... Tr but we're not going to hang on to like that pickup truck that's that 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 vehicle that's smoking. Well, right. And it's we, not, we, there's no... Right. We, don't, we don't want that. Right, <laughs> right. That would go down the road. Yes, right. and quickly. Yes. Yeah, it's an 08 with 200,000 miles on it. So right. Yeah. 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 But that 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 it's a very good question. So just moving down, um, just just to revisit the life pack AEDs and the air purifiers um, for the trucks um, were 19,000 and 5,500 respectively, and those were already funded through ARPA funds. Um, those were also on um, the fire department capital plan. Yeah. For the police department, um, they are looking to replace a 2014 cruiser. It's eight years old. It has 164,000 miles. Um, this, there is no money within the current leases, so that was part of what triggered considering another an additional lease. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, that vehicle is the backup cruiser that's, that's used. Is that my understanding? Yes, I think so. Right. So yep. it's not, there's two main cruisers or vehicles that are used, and this is the backup cruiser. I don't know. I don't see see if the chief chief is on. But. He's, he's probably not on. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Yes, is that what you have in your notes? I have in my note that this is, um, well, I, at the time we thought it was 2013, but whatever, that this is the backup. Okay. And that would come off of the state bid, yeah. you know, it's, so it's a reasonable price. Yeah, um, right. Okay. All right, DPW, of course, the big one um, is the upgrades at the wastewater plant that we discussed last week. That's the $12.1 million. Um, the um, replacing Ferry Street and King Street pump station generators and transfer switches. Those were already identified as ARPA fund projects. Um, install water filtration on well at waste, wastewater treatment plant. Um, that was also already identified as a project we would do with ARPA funds. Which list are you going off of? That's right, right here. The we're, summary. Well, we're kind of going back and I'm going you're, back and you're forth. This way and that way. Yeah, yeah right it's here. going. But, uh, the, just question. Oh. All right. Well, doesn't my understanding now is now is that if we do the wastewater plant that includes water. water. Yes, it does. It includes the water. It includes it, the water line. Right. Yes. So we wouldn't need the twenty thousand dollar. Not not to do a, not to do right. It. I mean, and if not it yeah, I mean, depending if it. Well, passes. well, right. I mean, yeah. but I mean, honestly, what we're using the water for there is drinking, right. primarily, right. Right. and maybe washing hands. I mean, like for a year to decide whether or not we're going to do the project, we could bring in a lot of bottled water for $20,000. You know yeah. what I mean? Like or oh, a yeah. lot less than that. We could bring in all the water they need. The, I, I believe that this actually started before we got into it the did. whole wastewater treatment. That, so that's why th this it is absolutely. here. And then, and then all of a sudden we got word, hey, right. you guys are, are going to be getting... Yeah, right, and so, it includes the water. Which so, includes the water, so it's so, yeah, right. right. So that's why that is so still on here, I would imagine. So it made sense to consider it, but now, right. we don't do you just want to see, I mean, like, if we don't wind up doing the sewer pro plant project, then I guess next year we could spend the $20,000 to put well, that. Well, we, but we could but also we put it, it on here, and then but you, if we did it on ARPA, ARPA funds, it's, we, we could, we could just, do it any time. Right. Right, exactly. Right. right. So we could just, it would be held off until we find out about the sewer project yeah, and tell the vote okay 
Okay, and then finally, replacing the co uh, compactor up at the transfer station. Um, that's eighty thousand dollars. There was that was thrown out as a potential ARPA project as well, but it could also be um, free cash. You know, yep, free cash. Yeah. Okay, and so um, let's see. This, they, they don't, I'm sorry to be jumping back and forth here, but they don't go in order of the spreadsheet. Um, so I guess I'll go, this is where it gets confusing because I don't want to miss anything going back and forth here. Um, under the water um, department, phase one, expand the water main on Straits Road to Depot Road. Um, this would then when phase two is completed it would um, create the loop to increase the water pressure um, so this would be this is going to be done in-house um, and it was identified as a priority i had a discussion with the dpw director about this and um and and i believe he he thought we could we could we could we that it didn't necessarily need to be done this year right away okay. um, because there could be some other app options to developing the loop rather than going down straights road where there's no houses and anyway but that was a discussion I had with him. So I certainly would like, you know, before we decide anything on this, I would, I would encourage us to have a discussion with him on this. Well, he'll be here next yeah. Tuesday, so we should go over yeah, this. Go over. We can any, go over all of his capital the DPW capital. related capital expenses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll put that down as. Uh, I I thought he did have it listed as something he wanted to do when he came to us, Sean. Yeah, I mean, I think he had a bunch of priorities, and yeah, he has, uh, he does. Have I a clearly, lot of the clearly, I think his my understanding. I really don't remember all the way they were ordered, but the uh, critical priority I thought number one was the uh, Raymond Ave to School Street. Um, right, was his number one, and then number two, I think, was the switch generator switch thing that we, at the with, that we ferry street and yes that we just yes, discussed yeah. yeah right and those were both things that we had already identified as arpa fund projects no they certainly could be but no i thought that was part of what we already voted on yeah yeah i mean we did didn't well, we i think at the time i mean the sort of deciding between arpa and free cash i mean we had a conversation at one time when we had a different understanding of what ARPA was allowing us to do. Now, this was the last big discussion we had about ARPA where we went through and we right. had an itemized list of the things that we were prioritizing and yep. working on first. And I thought those two projects were on that. I it was so. after we knew that it could be okay. done for right. more th than infrastructure. You, you do have a, a current copy of right. uh, the right. ARPA report and DPW items. Yeah, I think there's just there. a question of do we want to have a conversation, like of all these items, not whether we should do them or not. I mean, I think we're committed to doing those. We want to do those. But do we want to decide whether we want to do them for free cash or ARPA? Does it make sense, in other words, to hold off spending ARPA, ARPA money, funds? Uh, only because only because it doesn't require appropriation. So if, if emergencies come up, it's easier to use than any other money we have. And that's not to say you don't spend any of it or all, whatever. It's just something to consider when we're deciding yeah. how to fund all this stuff. <clears throat> well, so on, the, on what was decided, we do have the, um, the generator and transfer switches on there, yep. but I don't see the, the um, School Street Raymond Ave, so maybe we could split it. <laughs> Yeah. So, so we, one goes ARPA and one right, goes Right, we could decide cash. to do whatever we want with that. Yeah, what we want to do. Okay. I mean, because we do have a significant amount of free cash. Right. We probably right. do want to spend some. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and just, just on this first page of the spreadsheet, and then we can flip to the next page, um, there is replacing the DPW director's vehicle. That would be part of the lease program we discussed earlier. Um, he would be getting just to pick up. My understanding is that is dead. Dead. Dead, dead, better, really bad, I guess. So nothing for that. The vehicle, you mean? The vehicle. <laughs> oh, yeah, the vehicle. I saw it get towed back again the other. Oh. Okay. Went, 
flying by so, the house um, that's... for parts. <laughs> yep. Okay, so um, moving down the narrative portion of this DPW facilities, um, replacing the pedestrian bridge over Mill River, that's on Prospect Court, that's potential CPA funding. Um, I, I can't really speak too much to that project. I think that should be something we talk to Phil about. Well, Bob Wagner will be here next and week as to address well. that. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Community Preservation Committee has um, some questions regarding that project. And Phil will be here. For, for yeah. which project? Repairing what? The pedestrian bridge. Placing the pedestrian the bridge. bridge. Oh. Yeah. And that's CPA funding anyway. It would so be CPA funding. It's a right. town meeting. It would go to town meeting, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. And then purchasing a boiler for the emergency services building for radiant heat, fifteen thousand. That was identified. Um, yeah. That, that's in place. The, did we? The radiant heat is in place. I don't know if we talked about it, but no, it's first I've heard of it. It's in place. Uh, it's never been used because there's nothing to connect uh, it to. Connect it to. <laughs> oh, so. I mean like no power or no no boiler of any kind or no you know oh. heat generator yeah yeah so it's installed in the building it's just not ever being used because there's those um uh other heaters are in there you know the what kind i'm talking about the oh, those overhead yeah, heaters yeah, yeah exactly modine the heaters. modine heaters yep yeah yep okay okay so it's pretty cheap money relative to the <laughs> to having the system, you know, we have the system in place already. Yeah, doesn't function. We just don't right. run it. Yeah. Okay. Having a car in the driveway, but no keys, right? <laughs> right. We no, we got no gas. Um, so then, moving down to the um, highway portion of this, um, there's um, the drainage repair on Raymond Avenue School Street that we spoke about already. Installing. Wait, we already approved that with the last ARPAs, right? Well, see, it's not on here. I thought we did too, Daryl. Maybe next week we can get, I would love like two pieces of paper, like this is what we what, what, right. what we did with our butt and then yeah. this is what we're thinking about with you should have cash. This. You should have this. Okay, well. Yeah, we have. That is current up to date. Yes, and I did think it was on there too, Daryl. It's not, it's not listed on here. Yeah. Um, Cause I thought we talked about, it. but anyway, but, that, but, get, but that's what we were just talking about that. Maybe, maybe there's those two projects. Maybe one is ARPA and one is free cash, you know? So maybe you do, um, I mean, cause it seems like a pri priority anyway. So yeah, it was the number one priority for, Phil. I mean, so, so we'll do one, one way or another, we'll figure out how to fund it. The flashing pedestrian crossing signals, um, were identified as ARPA. They were already voted on, correct? I don't, I don't believe so. so. I don't from? remember no. that one. I don't think those ever were okay. on the list. Those, no. So and, those and, would and, be. And where are they going? Yeah, where are they going? Across the street. Right over yeah, in, in this, aren't there more than one? I think there. I think there is one, right? Down near. But um, well, there's one here. Right by the parking lot. Main right. Street yeah. and what's the street? Is it North Street? But I think they were going to be at additional park. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. crosswalks mm -hmm. here in the center of town where you have between the two schools and mm. oh, okay. the next one down okay. where I cross today. My nose doesn't have one. Mm. Um, tree removal and installing fence on Elm Court. Um, that would allow the DPW to better use that town-owned property down there for sort of an extension of their yard and some of the things that they do. Um, and then um, an Elm Court, uh, erecting a storage building down at Elm Court. Um, they're kind looking- of storage building are you building for $94,000? Pardon? A fabric building is my understanding. Right. Like a metal. I understand, yeah, I, yeah, yep. And I just think in today's day and age and the way costs are going up, I would be very concerned that even with a fabric building, by the time you get done with doing basics like bringing in a little power and pouring a little concrete, that you could do anything less than $100,000 unless it's a very small building. I, 
I'm, I, I'm not sure, but I think the intention was to store materials too. So oh, they may, just materials. Yeah, they may so not they be bringing a floor. They power. don't need yeah. any of that. Yeah, again, I mean, we'll get some of this when Phil is here, yeah. he can speak to this a little bit better. And, and you know, I wish David was here because he goes yeah. deeply into these. Um, right. Um, and then the pole barn garage doors up at the DPW yard for 15000 I'm looking those, at this spreadsheet. Are those new doors or? I don't think there are doors. There's no doors, I don't think, no. up there. Yeah, there was a project for I that a few doors. years ago. Well, I know we had to shore up the the roof or something a few Maybe years ago. Yes. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. I don't see but those don't... on this plan, I mean, this spreadsheet at all. Some of the equipment's going to get a little snow on it or something? I mean... We'll talk to Phil. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But I don't even see them on this spreadsheet. Am I missing this? Space is like the sunset. Pole like barn highway. Mm -hmm. But did we? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, I see them now. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there's um, moving on to there's you know there's let's see. Do I just want to make sure we went through all of the ones that are here? Um, I mean, we have on the plan chip seal, crack seal, various streets. 240,000, but that would be Chapter 90 funds. Mm -hmm. So it shows up on here, but it's not, you know, um, anything we need to. Um, yeah. And I'm just making sure we have all, everything that, because he, the way that David did these, they don't go in order um, from one to the, one mm -hmm. document to the other. Um, we talked about the logic controller at the water filter, water filter plant. I think we that was on the other list, right? What was was that on the ARPA list? The water controller. Yes. I thought yes. we put that on there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's right. It's listed here as ARPA. Thank God, Dan. We already Maple have Street fil Yeah, filtration plant logic controller. It's on the ARPA list. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything here. Sorry, just bear with me for a second. Um, the broadband extension at the water treatment plant was decided, I believe, already. Yeah, that was taken funds. care of. Okay, that's done. Okay, so I think for the most part that takes care of the DPW with the exception of the things that we want to um, ask Phil when he's in next week. And then the school department... Um, Replace student desks and furniture at SA and HES, $20,000. That was identified as a priority. Um, the technology replacement, which is the ongoing um, Chromebooks, Chromebooks yeah. um, $20,000. That was identified as a priority. Um, and those were the only ones we had um, on for this year for the school. So just to give you a sense of um, just what's, to, what's out there. Just to bring it up, although it's not on this year, the roof um, at HES mm -hmm. is, on, it is going to have to be done. The reason it's not on this year is because it doesn't yet qualify for school building assistance. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And next year it will. Mm -hmm. So it... it really actually does need to be done. It's just that you, we could get a significant uh, state allocation potentially next year, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is, right. percent, somewhere in that range. Um, and so we put it off for a year and they're gonna be able to patch it this year, you know, to hopefully um, not have any problems. But, you know, if we're gonna set aside, like if the ARPA money's good till 2027 or whatever, we're gonna think, I think we should just think about that, you know, that next year we're going to have to do that one way or the other probably. So we should just keep it in mind that, you know, mm -hmm. we can push out some of that ARPA money to use part of that or whatever we decide to do, but that that is on the horizon. Two other things, or three, excuse me, three other things on the horizon at the schools is the ongoing need to redo the parking lots yep. at both. Yes, which um, we're only and pushed up the list because of the roof. Yes. <laughs> so the right. roof became the number one priority. Right. Mm. So they, they're, they're 
you know, they're, they're very bad at both schools. Yes, they are. And then the other one is um, sort of a, a redesign and um, renovation of the office, the school office. Um, and, and I think it would be, I think it's an important project. Um, you know, it would, it would certainly look a lot better. It would be a lot more functional. There'd also be a, an improved safety aspect of how people enter the building. So you'd have to go through the office to get into the building as opposed to now. You're, you just walk in. I mean, you have to be let in, but once you're in, you don't, you're, you're just walking into a lobby with access to the hallways and everything. Um, and, and I think that it's high time we take a look at the, um, you know, the school nurse is right there basically in the office. There's no privacy. It's a very small facility. So there was talk of this. There was some, they looked into some, the, the design cost, I think, came in a little higher than they thought. So it was, it's being put off, but it's not going away. Yeah. So you're probably, on the roof, you're probably talking about $250,000 being the town's portion anyway. So, you know, if you, if we had some money put away the intent to use it for that, it might make that a lot easier to swallow next year when we actually have to, have to do it. Right. Are you talking about the roof or the office? The, the roof. Yeah. Because that, okay. you know, we, I mean, we have an idea about how much that is actually. The, the office, roof. We, yeah. Yeah the, yeah. the office, we, we don't know because you'd have to go through a whole design yeah. process. And there's some real space constraints there, as you know, and how it's laid out. It's pretty small. So, so that is out there. And that is something that we, we did discuss um, at the capital plan, meet, capital planning meetings. So a long list good job guys big, yeah big items mm -hmm. yeah so um, so continue so discussing yeah we'll just need we, to let phil know to make sure he can address all yeah, these to be able to speak to, to all his i'm sorry i just have one difference i wanted to just oh okay all right my spreadsheet just wasn't uh, up to date totally. okay i think david updated that yeah. one okay Whew. So now we now it's that time was the to get big to the money. budget. We have the library. <laughs> They've been waiting. So oh, Eliza, you're here waiting. Sorry, Eliza. Eliza. Microphone. Hi, how are you? Thanks for waiting. Hello. Hi. Great. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, and we can see you now, too. Do you want to talk just a little bit about your, your budget? Yeah, just do you want so to go through? Just so people yep. can uh, get an idea of what, what you're looking for? Sure. My budget is almost the same as last year. Um, the salary is the same, and then expenses, we have a slight increase um, just based on our network costs going up. But it's actually only a $100 increase. It's not very much. Right. Okay. And the budget covers building maintenance, staffing, materials, all the stuff we need to run the library. Right. And 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 there's always your budget needs to go up so much so you mm -hmm. get and I can't remember this you know, the the library grant. Yes. And and does it do so that? So the state requires that our our budget go up um and <laughs> so we have to add, it has to average um, two and a half percent every right three here, years. Like, but because okay. last year we got a significant enough increase, we're actually fine for this year. Okay. Okay. So, so we're that that's that's good to know. We always just like to make sure yep, that's we don't, don't want to make make sure you're not going to lose money. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Because yeah, that's a right. significant piece mm -hmm. of funding. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I checked to see that. I mean, she always Eliza. You're so good about making a note on your budget. Yes. Include yeah. that. Thank you. That's great. I don't have any questions. Anybody? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Eliza in the library? That was it. Eliza, Eliza. thank you. Yes, right, and ahead, th Diana. thanks for everything you do down there. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eliza. Thanks. Thank so we did have originally on the agenda for tonight the DPW. We've deferred that discussion to next week. So we're going to go to Marlene. For a pile of budgets here. Okay. So the first one, let's see. 
Well, do we want to go out of order? I mean, Amy's on again. Oh, and yeah, right I now they're to last. Cover those, but if Amy's oh, on, I, would like to. I didn't know you were it. covering all of them. That's yeah, fine. those are those are, are very you know, okay. small but No, no, that's and, fine. Um, but since Amy is uh, joining us, if she didn't like mean to, to put her on the spot, I just didn't. You know. Amy, did you want to speak to the historical commission budget? I don't have it here, Marlene. You don't. It's not in this pile. Hi. You gave oh, me anything. I didn't. Hello here. again, Amy. Here. Hi. You can just um, you can give that back to me. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I just, you know, I felt like I should be here. Um, I think you can see our budget is uh, less than last year because uh, last year you very uh, generously gave us some uh, funds to um, migrate our data and our database, right. which that's been a roaring success. Um, and, you know, pretty much other than that, Factor. it's uh, the same as always. We're maintaining the farm museum. Um, is there anything... Anything else you need to know? No, that's great. Nope, Thank that's you. No, that's pretty straightforward. I'm, I'm all set. I don't know if the finance committee has any yeah, questions. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it looks great. Thank you, Amy. We appreciate you staying on, and we appreciate all that you do, that you guys do for Hatfield. Thank you. Yep. Well, thank you. I appreciate what you guys do, too. You do a lot more work than I do, believe yeah. me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Okay, take care. Yep, Bye -bye. you too. Okay, so that was fast, fast, fast and curious. a reduction. How? No. That's great. Okay, so I'm I mean, looking just, here, Marlene. Just for, I don't see for HCTV. speed's sake, Marlene, some of those the, the smaller budgets since we did historical, mm -hmm. the other ones listed, and I don't have the agenda in front of me. They were all relatively small recreation. Were there the, any changes? That there we, weren't any changes. Anything so, we need, really need to discuss? As you, not really. Nothing. Nothing has changed. They're they're all the same. The animal inspector, animal control officer's budget um, has stayed the same. And same with ZBA. Um, recreation, as you know, there's a revolving fund. Last year, they needed um, additional funds. We added a $5,000 line item into yes. the operating budget. And they would continue, like to continue to receive that $5,000. They, they feel it recreation. is necessary. Recreation commission, okay. yes. Yeah. But they're not on our, oh, they are on our agenda. I don't have them here. Right. They don't have a sheet. They don't. They don't have a sheet, and and on the agenda. But that's not different from last year. It's not. Different. It's not different. Okay. No, it hasn't it's increased. The, the five thousand is right. And, and if I'm not mistaken, we had gone years funding it, and then we we didn't fund it because right. of all the money that was in their revolving account. Because we were told the accounting service said they need to spend some of that down and set it. So yeah, well, now yeah, we're back the other way. Right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. So. I'm sorry, I need to backtrack a little bit because we do have the, um, the letter from Superintendent Wood about the costs associated with installing the freezer. Oh, you're going to after. Or, or you can. I okay. Mean, oh, we have John. Okay. We, uh, is the super, superintendent on? He is not able to join us and, tonight. And, and we really, we talked about this last week. Right. And so I got an email this week from the superintendent saying... What, what should he do? And I suggested he, you know, send a letter to Marlene that would go to us. And um, yeah. he's going to be um, the freezer, um, which was funded last year. Um, um, for Smith Academy. The, for Smith Academy. Um, there's going to be, he needs $9,260.58 for installation costs. I guess they have to up upgrade some of the electrical or whatever to do it, which they weren't aware of. And mm -hmm. so... Um, I, I think, I mean, obviously we want the freezer to work, and so we have a couple of different options. We could use ARPA funds. We could use, we could wait finance and use committee five, reserve. free cash, or easiest might be finance reserve. Yeah. Michael had contacted me last week, and um, yeah, he, they didn't feel comfortable using their operating budget to and, well, that's, take care yeah, of that. Yeah, that's fine. It's yeah. just, I mean... My gut reaction would be not to do it as a like prior year deficiency situation. Yeah, no. My gut reaction would be to either use ARPA or finance reserve. 
I think we have cover it this year. But what do we have in finance? I mean, we still have a significant amount of money in yeah. finance reserve. Have right? we spent any? Well, we spent, you, there was one thing you spent, but I can't remember what. It's no, not much. There has it's been much. one it's item. It's not much. So, There's so, probably 30. Yeah, my, my suggestion is that we would we would fund it out of finance reserve and. I mean, it's and, sort of an unexpected expense from last yes, year's budget, so it, that's it what sense. finance yeah. reserve is. The for. only thing I can't remember is Marlene. Is this something that he has to know? Does he notify the accountant and then and then it goes that way, or can we vote on it today and? The finance reserve. Yeah. We um, well, we do that form. Yeah. We can fill out that form. The finance committee. You can still to. vote it any time, and then Why don't you, vote you still it? need to sign that. And form. then, and then you can bring it next week, and we'll just sign sure. it. And then I'll yeah, send it to the accountant. Just checks to make sure she the does. Money is actually there, but she verifies the balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually so, there. so you want to vote tonight? Yeah, we might as well. Well, vote. you guys vote it. We don't, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I would ent entertain a motion. If we don't have the money. We won't do it. Yeah. To. Yeah. Hope not. <laughs> right. Uh, to uh, we need a motion to fund nine thousand two hundred and sixty dollars and fifty eight cents um, for the final cost of repair and installation of the uh, freezer at Smith Academy, which was purchased by the town last year, and to do so through finance reserve. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. I hear a second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Probably be up and running just in time for school to yes. end yeah. for the year. Right. But, but that's okay. That's It'll okay. be there for many, many, many years to come. So, so yeah, so Marlene, next week you'll bring that. I will. I'm, Absolutely. I'm glad the freezer is finally being replaced. It's had stalagmites and stalactites, whatever those things are called, for, for years. Oh, for years. I mean, I don't know how often the seal got replaced and how often thermostats got replaced. I mean, it was, it was just limping along. Yeah. It was just well, a matter of time. For a number. Number. Yeah, I, well, I was on the other side of the house, and I remember it's like, come on, man. I know. <laughs> Let's get this fixed. Yeah, I definitely would hate to see it sitting over there not plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, uh, man. Good. Okay, uh, so just looking at the, the list of budgets here, um, as I said, from animal inspector, animal control officer down to historical commission, everything is the same. Um, so the cable TV uh, budget, you, you should all have a copy of that. I'll I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. have those. Okay. Um, I mean, if they're the same, it's, it's fine. Well, it's, just, it's the only, there is, it, it did go up. Um, so, you know, that's an enterprise fund. I was going to say, most okay. of it's funded through. It is. All of it is funded right. um, through, from the enterprise. I have a question about that because I totally don't know the answer to this. Um, but it occurred to me one day, um, as people uh, move away from cable TV subscriptions, mm. what happens to the money that funds the... We're in the midst of our cable... Yeah, it's, it declines. Uh, we are negotiating. Right yeah. So, okay. We're hoping to go up a little bit more percentage mm. that we get in a contest. Yeah. Uh, but that's, it's, it's not dropped too much. The subs yeah, subscribers have dropped slightly. That, like, oh, they only the drop money, slightly? That's a the great question. The money that they get from the internet, yeah. they don't share with us. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not either. So I'm. That's why I'm yeah. an attorney. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> It'd be interesting to know that. I mean, just because it, you know, if unless something dramatically changes, mm -hmm. it appears like we're moving yeah. in a certain direction here. And, yeah. And I guess if there is no cable, then we still have to do something. So how do we? What do we do? Well, the feds will step in then. Yeah. Change the law. Yeah, something would happen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. John and Marlene have been. Uh, in contract negotiations with Comcast yeah. and having our attorney because tis this is the year so yeah. mm -hmm. so thank Boy. you to John and Ten Marlene years for goes that. by quick. Yeah. Did you update this Marlene since you have this wrong starting wage for him? We were, we discussed the other day that the footage for his wage was correct. I should have. Yes, I believe I did. So did you, but I will double check that. Just though. the total budget number. I have 68250. Is that what you have? 
showed you guys have? Okay. Yeah, but that was from the budget. So that, that was from the handouts we got. This yeah. is the total operating budget. 68,250, but that may change if you change it. It's 68,250 is the requested for 23. Yeah. But now, if you really want to give a 5% increase and you have a different amount as the starting wage, because you didn't have a salary line in there correctly? Well, on the budget spreadsheet, right, is what I, I fixed it, over I there, fixed it there, and I okay. believe I did, but I will have to check okay. this, though. Um, so regarding the, the cable TV uh, operations, I am requesting uh, a 5% rate increase for the cable, cable TV manager. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his... As Brian just mentioned, uh, his his knowledge and, and experience um, is very beneficial to the town, and it's been helpful during the negotiation meetings with Comcast. And well, and it's helpful to I mean, it, uh, you know, I need to spare really room next door. He's to, here you know, all the time. Yeah. People right. have the ability it's, to know so much more about what's going on. Right. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, yeah. So I mean, it, it is a professional position, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and I, I believe it. it and this warrants. is all funded through that enterprise fund, anyway, right? Right. Yep. Correct. So it's not a taxation. No. No. Right. I think that's a very appropriate increase. Oh, yeah, personally. I do as well. Yeah. John does a lot of work. Very reliable. I mean, everything's set up when we get here. It's, and I think townspeople really appreciate this. And I think you know, we need to. Yeah. yeah. Well deserved. John does Great. does his, the his he does the purchasing for for right. all equipment, that checking it out. One right. The one man band. Oh, one hmm. one point two million. Yep, no problem with that. Quite a bit. Yep. Okay. The Lori thing. Yeah, we'll do this one. I did hear on oh, the news that Lori Hampton yeah. is getting that's an Arby's. Arby's. You want to take it up a, now? A request for oh, is, we could do that. Um, that was that yeah, was that was up. That's the last thing, right? Till the drop town meeting that is the only other um request right now do you want to take that out of take that up now diana yeah let's what take it up um, the, there's a, a an additional request for uh, arpa funds from the accountant and this was for uh for time that they had put in on ARPA. Uh, on ARPA, <laughs> calculating <laughs> the revenue loss. Go figure. Um, so that's an additional $4,185. When I say additional, there were um, monies that were authorized, I believe, back in January for, for the financial reporting. Do we do we vote yeah, that, that or is that the finance? Both boards vote that. The select board. Select votes okay, these. I'll make a, I'll make a motion that we um, that the select board um, approves this um, use of ARPA funds, forty one eighty five for accounting services relative mm -hmm. to ARPA funds. Target. A uh, motion made and second. Any further discussion? Nope. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then Thank they you. need to vote it as well, right? No. Or is it yeah, just the like board? Just board. Just with like okay. Okay. So there's other budgets listed here, Marlene. Yeah. So some of these we can go through very quickly. Um, annual town report um, that has not changed, and you know we we get a pretty good deal um, on on the printing. So. I think we may have turned some money back last year, okay. but um, I, I didn't want to reduce that because reduce the cost it. of, of right. materials is increasing. Going up. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You go, Diana. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yep. The next item is the audit and OPEB um, audits. The audit is Tony Roselli's annual um, audit of the town's financial statements, mm -hmm. and then there is a separate firm that does the OPEB reporting. We, there is an increase as a result of uh, the regular annual audit with our auditor, um, a slight increase, and 
we may have to have an ARPA single audit. So there's an additional $5,000 that's been, been added for, for that. Okay. Did you hand these ones out? Because none of us have. Them. Yeah, I didn't know where you were. You don't at. have the, the agenda. You don't have the audit? No. No. Not on the agenda. Yeah, oh, I was town administrator. So uh, yeah, all oh, the yeah, all the oh, town that, gotcha. the budgets at the town uh, administrator. Right. Oh, so yeah. nobody has copies of these? Well, we might now that we know. I know where to look. I, I didn't get where you were oh, going with that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> now we get it, Marlene. Okay. I just, you know what I mean? So it, yeah. I, it wasn't. It wasn't spelled it wasn't out clear like this. That you, right? I see yeah. what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So town administrator items and the ones and down. Right. These are other We're and separate now. departments or yep. positions. Okay. So uh, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. So let's That's try okay. to go through these fairly quickly. If there's not a lot of changes to them. Yeah. Okay. The audit. There is a change audit is there, yeah. So well, well, you just we, went through a, that one, right? I don't. I even mean, some have of these that. you can't not. And that's fund, right? I mean, it's an audit, so and, and you know. Single audit is on the ARPA list too, right? <coughs> For five thousand uh, dollars. That is, yes, single audit, five thousand dollars. So it's just. That is so that is that approved for ARPA? It was, so we don't need it in the operating budget then. Good. I don't okay. even remember talking. Yeah, I don't think we have those, Marlene. It's still at the ARPA. No, you don't. Okay, I am sorry. So, do you want to wait and? And you, it's up to you. Next week. If you want to zip through them next Tuesday, yeah. or if there, or if there's really no changes, still early. Although, uh, uh, general liability and so. property, there oh. is an increase, uh, and that the is the insurance. There is every year. Yeah. So why don't we? Can we? My. Okay. <laughs> if there's no changes to them, or they're level funded from last year, do you want to go through them, or do you want to? I would, I would like to know the changes. My, my questions right. with her budget might uh, talk around technology. We seem to bring that up every year with yep. what we're doing with mm -hmm. new computers, new technology, and then internet, and not internet, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, huh? Like support? Like support. Right. Yeah. IT support. Initially, I wasn't um, increasing it at, at this time, but then um, the archive social... Okay. Uh, I'm go sorry. Ahead. May go I interrupt ahead. you? But we don't have the sheets. We're not in front talking of us. about them tonight. So let's we don't have the sheet. put that off to next okay, week. But that's we'll fine. sorry, I apologize. Let's make you don't sure have everybody that's knows all. You know, no. Okay. Okay. So okay. then I, are we gonna go through this whole list underneath? I know we did yeah, some. We did. Little ones we that did. where Marlene said there it's are no just changes. No changes. Okay. Right. Yeah. We covered okay. all those. So we will just we'll So just next week we'll do DPW and all of your your lines, Marlene. Yes. Okay. And then maybe the And then whatever else well. Whatever's left. Should be our last one, right? Till we. Do you have a spreadsheet you're working on, Mar Marlene? In the I do, and I'm prepared to to show that to you. Can you just um, send it to me? I can do that as Thanks. well. Brian, there'll be another one after that. Oh, you guys. I, right. We haven't done accounting, so I you know. collector, and I don't want to go behind Phil with that amount of number of budgets I have. Right. <laughs> so we'll have. So we yeah. wanted to Two ask more. if we, because um, we, you know expect that there'll be quite a bit of discussion next week with DPW and planning board will be here. And initially we had scheduled the financial uh, departments and we were going to bump those off to the 29th if possible. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Do what we got to do. Okay. Okay. So the only other item is the preliminary draft of the town meeting warrant. So you have a copy of the warrant and I do have the budget that I'd like to open up and share it with everybody. So whichever you'd like to look at first. You have the what that you want to open We're going to go the whole budget? The operating budget. Okay. We, I just wanted to, you know. The spreadsheet? The spreadsheet, the workbook that we. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're going to put it up on the screen for us? I can do that. Would you like to do that now or look at the warrant articles? Well, we're talking about the budget. Let's bring the budget up, and then we'll. But I, I guess, what, what are we, are we looking going, at? What are because we looking at? Yeah, I know I mean, we're if we're we haven't gone through all the budgets. Well, yet. No, but I'm okay. I'm going to share it, um, so we should be able to do that. I I think I think the question is, Marlene, what you're you're pulling up the spreadsheet, but what are we actually? Yeah, why? Why are we looking at it why tonight? Are we Do we still need to go tonight? through the other budgets, or was there something in particular you wanted to show us? 
Um, that, well, that's... I just wanted to show, you know, the progress okay. of, of the budget. We don't have to. I mean, we're no, no, not no, making I... any decisions tonight. Well, food for thought. I mean, the last few years, we've done it over there with pulling it up on the big Giant screen. Board. And it's been, it worked out, yeah, I think, that's very a lot well. Nicer than this. So I'd like to see if anybody was up for discussion on moving it there for a couple of the meetings when it's time for the spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot easier to see it. It is. Over there, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we did run into some problems, though, with the connection over there, and um, well, oh. hopefully it can be worked out. So any changes we made on the budget last year, when I went back to my computer, those changes weren't there. That was troublesome. Put it up on the wall or something. Well, well, can it be put on the computer screens in front of us? Yes, that's what yeah. I was sharing it. So yeah. you have it, but it's not it. enlarged on your hard. screen. Yeah, no. That's very. That's it's, too it's small too for small. you to look at. So I don't know how that would be. In well, that's, yeah, that's what, what I was thinking. Yeah. If we had a screen in front of us, then, yeah. then John doesn't have to move his stuff to Yeah, John, because what they're the seeing on the screen wall is, is very small. Yeah. Whatever wall. Right. Some, yeah. You know. yeah, how will that lend itself to people at home being able to understand what we're looking at? Well, I, No I different than if really we were next door. Next you know. door, either on the wall. I mean, right. Yeah, it's hard, hard, hard to see. But, but you'll, you'll, you're going to email that. I will email to that. Us to so we can I mean, if you want, if people, um, I guess at some point, we could put it sure. out. Mm -hmm. I guess. Going we'll, out on the, going yeah. Out yeah, I mean, at some point, we could put it on the website, too, when it's ready right. to, when people want to look at it. But yeah. my numbers are really nice. Right. Yeah, I mean, right now. All the loan stuff's in there, so. Yeah, right. So, so next week, we're going to do DPW and finish up with Marlene. And then planning board and the planning board. And then the week after we'll we'll do Sharon and then Debbie. what assessors, assessors, treasurer, collector and accountant. All the. Yeah. OK. OK. So yeah, we've got quite a bit of work. to we've do. We've got quite a bit. So that's the 29th. And yep. so then we're looking probably the following week whatever that is april whatever that tuesday yeah. will, will be our first chance to meet and put all the look at the budget and mm -hmm. see where we are well we'll know where we are before that but i mean at this point in the warrant is there anything in here that's not boilerplate yeah other than the um, sewer plant? Well, I mean, there's question. the luminarium article at the end. Um, but it's all, I mean, I don't think we need to go through and discuss all of this. I think it's mm. just something we can have as a reference for now, right? Right. But I did believe, I think we should, again, getting back to, it all folds in with this discussion on use of the park and everything, this article about luminarium I thought that the intent was actually to just simply rescind the vote from 2000. What number are you on, Diane? The very this? last article, oh. page eight. But we need to have we need to have people in to discuss what it is they're looking to do. So. Okay. Who, that was the only one. Who runs the limit? I mean, it used to be the HBA did it. And I didn't, don't mm. even know if the HBA exists. So, so who I runs it I don't think they now? do. I mean, um, Chief Flaherty, Chief Flaherty does and has done parts of it. Yeah. There's, you know, the last couple Elected years, effort. there's been sort of 350th involvement because of yeah. fireworks and things like that. So it has to just sort of be looked at. And Well, that's, that's kind of my question. Like, going forward, are, are we going to put this on a particular group or well the article in here puts it on the select board in coordination with what appears to be anybody who's interested <laughs> in terms of groups organizations clubs it, i think whatever. it needs to it, it just it, it warrants some discussion that's all i'm saying okay it's a but to your point it's always been a volunteer yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's been right. that's yeah. been doing it. You're right. It was HBA. And, and it, this is in here because a Sunday to a Saturday is because there was a proclamation made, and there's that's the debate of is a proclamation really a binding? A is it edict? Just, but we're just gonna in 2000. I take mean, it, care yeah. of it. It 
Right. Yeah. Okay. I no, think whoever's volunteering to run it should get to pick what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> but that's just me. Okay. Okay. So that's all we have for tonight. Did Marlene, so. was there anything else you needed right. to? Everybody's all packed up zip here. through. Ready to Make go. A to no, it's everybody. Uh, I, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Thanks for having that ready. I just think we're, right. they're not ready. Guys for are adjourned. It. We are adjourned. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Do you have more to do? No. I don't think so. Do we have more to and do? I'll make a motion to adjourn then. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. you, John. Thanks, Thank you, John. Karen.